Hello everybody, welcome along for one final time to the Wimbledon Coffee Morning presented by Lavat. So we're here on centre court where just 16 short hours ago, Novak Djokovic was defeating Matteo Berrettini to make it Wimbledon title number six. Yeah, bittersweet evening for Matteo Berrettini, but let's hope seeing the boys in blue win last night will have inspired him for years to come. But first, let's celebrate our men's 2021 singles champion, Novak Djokovic. title for the Serbian superstar. History made. He has caught Federer and Nadal. Seven-year-old boy in Serbia, you know, constructing a tennis, Wimbledon tennis trophy in, in my room from improvised materials that I could find in the room. And today, standing with the sixth uh, Wimbledon, it's, uh, it's incredible. Amazing. Such an honor to be here and unbelievable feeling. Really great run during the two weeks, also before in the Queens, so couldn't ask for more, but I mean, maybe a little bit more, just this <laughs> win. <laughs> Wimbledon title number six, but your 20th Grand Slam title. <laughs> Level with Roger and Rafa. What does that mean to you? <laughs> <laughs> it, it means it means none of us three will stop. I think that's what it means. And uh, last ten years has been uh, an incredible journey that is not stopping here. Well, Djokovic reaching twenty Grand Slam titles does beg the obvious question. Is he the greatest of all time? Well, that's the question that we want you guys at home to give your answers to because we can't decide, Danny, can we? There's, there's the big three now, of course, Rafa Nadal, Novak Djokovic and Roger Federer. And obviously Roger Federer even congratulated Djokovic yesterday. He messaged him, didn't he, to say congratulations. And it was so great that he gets to be around this tennis era and, and play amongst him and the, the greatest of all time. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we feel pretty lucky, really, that we're seeing three of pretty much the best to ever do it, all playing at exactly the same time. And all of them are going to be competing as well at the US Open later in the year. I'm looking forward to that yeah, already. So yeah, so leave your comments, of course, and let us know who you think the greatest men's player of all time is. But let's quickly have a nod to what happened here behind us yesterday. I mean, it was just magical, really, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, we saw the wolf energy, didn't we, from Novak Djokovic. You just, every time you think he's beaten, nah, not happening. I mean, we saw he went, what was it, 5-2 up in the first set? Looked like he was going to steamroller. Matteo Berrettini, who managed to fight back, won that first set, but then almost immediately, it was like we saw in the first round when Jack Draper got the only other set that Djokovic has dropped this year off him in the first round. It was almost like you just made him angry. And then he just basically came out and was like, I've had enough now, I'm going to win this match. And he did. Yeah, but let's have a word on Matteo Berrettini, the 25-year-old Italian, the first Italian to ever get to a final here at Wimbledon. He's made his own slice of history, of course, and he even said, I know I can win this title now, I just don't know when. Well, I think I could probably answer that for him we, when Novak Djokovic decides he doesn't want to play here anymore. Ouch, that's because, harsh. I mean, my goodness, he, he's just extraordinary. He's won the first three Grand Slams of the year. He's on for the calendar slam, which has not been done since 1969, winning all four Grand Slams in the same year. That was Rod Laver back then. He could even... This might be his only chance of getting the Golden Slam as well because the Olympics starts very soon. He says he may, it was always the plan to go. He's now 50-50. I think he might do. That's a chance at a real history. No one's ever done that before. Well, I think obviously the Olympics is up next, of course. That's before the US Open. He's on great form. Mm -hmm. It's momentum. If that momentum can carry him through just a few more weeks, then who knows? That really would be something special if we could uh, see that from Djokovic, of course. But let's, let's talk about the fans. Yes. The fans 
are always here at Wimbledon, out in force, and we are so lucky that we got 100% capacity for the final. But there was one lady, Danny, who has been here for the entire fortnight, it seems, and she bought something special for Djokovic, yes. didn't she? Yes, well, we saw her, didn't we, in week one? We saw her, and we, I was like, and we need to track her down. We did found we? her again. Yes, we did. We didn't, we we didn't, didn't track we her didn't down. No, no, but we she didn't. was back, though, because she was back with, um, with the same lovely picture of Novak Djokovic in the stands looking on adoringly. And it seemed like Djokovic did actually win over the fans in the end. Yeah. At the start of the match, it was very much Matteo being chanted out here on centre that's court. That's British fans. We the love the underdog. underdog of course we? it was. And then as soon as they saw Djokovic was on for his sixth, was on for his 20th, the fans really did get behind him. And I love the moment at the end when he went over to the seven-year-old girl who yeah. was in the front row with her dad and gave his tennis racket to her. That's a moment she will not forget. And I'm sure she's taking that tennis racket to school with her this morning to show all her friends and say, look, look at what I've got. And I'm sure he's now gained an extra super fan in the form of that girl. <laughs> That'll be her in a few years' time, won't it? No, fantastic stuff. Um, but there were so many great shots as well in the actual match that we've not really talked about too much so far. Let's see if any of them make it into the shots of the tournament. That deserves a bit more applause, and he gets it. And how have we missed this? We've been asked for a few shots of the day, and that 30, 15. is going to be tough to beat. Not only for shot of the day, shot of the tournament. Well, Monfils is feeling it now, and a little bit of high-stepping before he makes his way back to his mark beyond the baseline. A tweener deflecting the net cord, and he still finds the range. She's made it! She's made it! That was an extra push the last couple of steps from Bolter because it did not look like she was going to get there. It's right in front of our comm box. She willed her way to that forehand and then great racket work to get it by Sabalenka. Cheers. across the baseline and still able to control the racket head to come up with the cross-court backhand winning passing shot. just clubs this. Oh, that is extraordinary from Fucevic. Raises that right fist in the direction of his connections. Yeah. What an incredible get. And then the skill and control to execute it at full stretch while applying the brakes to avoid the collision Fucevic with the net. Well, I've seen it all now. Oh, my word. Did she really do that? That was 
a mesmerizing drop volley a full stretch under breakpoint pressure quite special just Oh, right in front of us. <laughs> he just arrived like a, a, a flash in front of the commentary box. Well, a massive grin from just about everybody in here, even Berrettini. Who saw this ball just out of reach. What court coverage. Djokovic not only gets to this ball, he's able to control the racket face on the slide. Well, Tom Cruise was back in the building again. He watched the women's final and then the men's as well. But Danny, I think he, he may have been here to ask you why you've only seen two of his films, shame on you. I know, I've been too busy watching the tennis, haven't I? But if like me, there's some things you may have missed this last fortnight, we'll get you caught up with all the things you may have missed at Wimbledon 2021. Thank you. Captain Bird's eyes calling the lines here. Other frozen foods are available. <laughs> They're lively balls. They've just been let out of their tin. They want to run around and have some fun. <laughs> That's more like it. It's Rupert the Bear. Second turn. And what a, what a talent he is. Time. Both of them channeling Little Richard. It's important to look your best on a big deck. Rena Lichtenstein's getting on the phone to the referee's office. Yeah, can we get some banana for fun? Oh, it's bananas. <laughs> that sounded awfully like a champagne bottle popping. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, can you please switch off your mobile phones? Thank you. A slightly more polite interpretation of what Rublev was saying. <laughs> well, some of those occasionally make the highlights real, Fair that enough. one won't. Is there a low lights reel? <laughs> How are you doing? Very good. I left my tennis shoes in the locker room. I left my tennis shoes in the locker room. He's talking to the guy in the crew. Good start. Good start. <laughs> players are, are well liked on tour I have to say <laughs> and they, they clearly get along well from one banana to another what am I doing Ooh. Ouch. right in the top of the head Done. <laughs> well, Sherlock Holmes enjoyed it. <laughs> I bet the sandwiches are still dry. Well, put that man in the slips. That's 40, very 40. well held. Oh, <laughs> stinging bum cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, flying down here to the centre court. It's a pigeon camera. It's a well-trained pigeon. Holds a camera. Mission impossible, it seems. <laughs> you stole my line, John. Six, I was, oh, I didn't know you I was six, waiting three, for that. Three, oh, sorry. <laughs> Well, Danny, did you get to see Tom Cruise? Sadly, no, I managed to miss him entirely. Despite him being here 
two days this week now? It's probably because you haven't seen his films. You don't He's actually know what me. he looks like. He's avoiding me. <laughs> but this lucky fan did get to see Tom Cruise, but maybe he didn't get to expect to see him outside the Wimbledon shop. I wonder what Tom Cruise was buying in there. Oh, I'd love to know. I'll go socks. Wimbledon socks are classic, guys. What about the towels? The towels are really cool this year. Yeah, you get the towels free. Well, if you're a tennis star, that is. I mean, does Tom Cruise get them free? Hmm, I wonder, I wonder what the Royal Box guests actually get. We'll have to find out and tell you that next year, of course. But <laughs> I do know that all the players who get to compete in this tournament, they get a free token. Laura Robson was saying they get a free token to go and spend in the shop. So I wonder if Ashley Barty did that and took anything home for her family, because if it was me, I'd be literally buying everything I possibly could. I think the Venus Rosewater dish is probably good <laughs> enough, isn't it, really? But it was the early hours of Sunday morning by the time Ash Barty won her first Wimbledon title, and this is how her family reacted. And it wasn't just friends and family of Ash Bass that were up into the early hours either. The great and the good of Australia were as well. I thought you were going to go greatest showman there, Danny. <laughs> yes, it was the greatest showman, Hugh Jackman, a.k.a. Wolverine. He was up celebrating as well. He actually decided to celebrate slash commentate on a bit of Australian sporting history. What a slice. Yes. Uh, yes! 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 <laughs> Look at oh, the main oh, stretch. Oh. That's it, Ash. Oh, oh class. Oh, Ash Barty. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah Ash, you're a legend. Yay. And 50 years. Oh, look at her. Oh, 50 years since we have gone. Oh, oh my gosh, look, look at, at it. It's just so much emotion. Oh, so proud of you. Well done, beautiful. Ash. You're a legend. Just an extraordinary moment for not just for Ash Barty, but for all of Australia as well, especially what she's done, um, paying tribute to Yvonne gurgon Corley 50 years since her first, um, first win here, wearing that dress inspired by her as well. Yeah, totally. I mean, since she's come back, since her break from tennis in 2017, it's really set the ball rolling for mm. what Ash Barty has gone on to achieve. I mean, 2019, her first slam there, she's been world number one since then, June 2019, 77 consecutive weeks at the top of the table, which is incredible. She's now won the most WTA titles in that time as well, 12 to her name, and going to take her second slam here after she was injured, Danny, let's not forget, just a few weeks ago. And she said herself, you know, I'm not pressing the panic button just yet, but an injury is an injury and you have to really kind of overcome that mentally and physically, of course. Well, did you see, her coaches apparently didn't tell her how serious her hip injury was that forced her to withdraw at Roland Garros. Apparently, it's like a three-month injury, really, and she was back after three weeks. So she didn't even know how serious it was herself. She probably shows the, the power of the mind, doesn't it, where she just powered through. Or a great team there. She always talks this about how important this her team are. She never really speaks about herself as, as a single person out there. It's always a nod to, to her team and what they achieved together. But a quick nod to Carolina Pliskova mm. as well. It's the first time in a ladies final since 2012 that it went to three sets. That second set tie break, I think we all thought, could she do it, Pliskova? Could she come back and, wow. and cause the upset? of the tournament here because you know she's she's gone this far before not here but back in 2016 at the US Open she's been a former world number one herself but still yet to get over that line and get her maiden slam mm. she said though she needs to learn how to lose she knows how to lose now and that's what all of the greats say you lose you lose you lose and then you succeed because of the way you learn how to lose and I'm sure that'll be the same for her and they weren't the only champions that we crowned on Saturday the doubles is just incredible fun. The women's doubles in particular might well have been the most entertaining match played here over the weekend. The winners were Shea Sue and Elise Mertens. Welcome back to uh, Sacenta Court. And this is the women's doubles between Elena Vesnina and Veronica Kudamatova and Shea Sue and Elise Mertens. And they got the job done with the first. In first set. Wasn't it? Here we go. That 
that's what it takes to win a Grand Slam. Thank you so much for the support. It was really amazing to come back again and win. It was a great atmosphere. And then, you know, being back at Wimbledon is just uh, unbelievable. Your 2021 Wimbledon champions from Chinese Taipei, Shea Su Wei, and from Belgium, Elise Mertens. Some fantastic moments there in a tournament that's quite frankly been full of them. Yeah, it's been amazing, hasn't it? So many great moments. And actually, we asked our friends of the show, we had plenty of them on the channel this time out to give us theirs. My favourite moment of Wimbledon 2021 has been Emma Raducanu making it through to the fourth round. She did fantastically well, only her second WTA event and just really managed the big stage well, enjoyed every single moment, enjoyed the crowd and to get through past Von Drusova and Kostir as well and gave her everything she could for the whole championship. And one to watch for the future, a very exciting prospect. British tennis has a new start. Wimbledon has a new start. It's been so exciting being back at Wimbledon 2021. My favourite moment is just being here every single day, being able to work, being able to watch the matches. And it's been extremely special having been away for two years. Well, my moment of the championships this year was Ashley Barty winning the ladies singles. It was a brilliant match, three sets over Karolina Pliskova in the final and the end to a brilliant story as well, uh, following in the footsteps of Yvonne Goulagong Corley, her hero who was the first Australian woman to win uh, the ladies singles here at Wimbledon. I hope I made Yvonne proud. No, oh, <laughs> you did. And Ashley Barty as we've seen in the interviews throughout the last couple of weeks, is such a likeable character. She paid tribute to her coaching team, Craig Tizer, her coach, and all of the backroom staff there, her family who were back home in Australia watching. And she's just such a likeable uh, champion. And she's now won two Grand Slam titles. And I think she could go on and win even more. When I was walking in, uh, one of the days that Roger Federer was playing on centre court, one of his matches, and there was a little boy walking in, he was queuing up, uh, he had a ticket, and he was saying to his dad, am I going to get to see Roger Federer? Am I going to get to see Roger Federer? And his dad was saying, yes, 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 you're going to get to see Roger Federer. And I think that made me realise just how special it is to come to Wimbledon. The spectators who get to come here, young and old, uh, look forward to watching the great players on, on you know, the, the biggest courts in tennis, centre court, court one, or even the outside courts if they've got a, a grounds pass. And for that little boy, that was going to make his day, you know, make his year. And it will be a day that he remembers for the rest of his life. So Wimbledon is a very special place and it was great to be back this year. Now, I've been roving around the grounds interviewing so many different people, but one that definitely stands out was when I got to interview the legend, Billie Jean King. She spoke to me for about 10 minutes, started interviewing me during it, and told me that she would invite the Queen to a dinner party because she was good crack. Honestly, it was absolutely fantastic. But in terms of on the court, I think my favourite moment has got to be Andy Murray in the second round against Oscar Otto. He's back at Wimbledon for playing singles for the first time in four years. And it was a late night match. The crowd was going wild. Everyone was on the hill. And it just felt like Andy Murray of old. It was one of my best, best moments here, that's for sure. But overall, I would say just being back here at Wimbledon at SW19 after everything that's happened over the last 18 months or so, it is so great. Great to be back. I mean, so many great moments. It's very difficult to pick. We'll get on to ours in a sec. But for a start, how great was it just to have some fans back watching sport? Well, fans back and us to be back as well. Yeah. We all unfortunately missed the tournament in 2020. It was so great to be back and so many people that you got to speak to walking around the grounds were just so thrilled to be here. I remember speaking to a couple who'd been coming for 30 years. They said they were gutted to have missed last year. It was the first year in the 30 years they had ever missed. And they were like excited kids, Danny. They actually wanted to yeah, come up to me and be was. on TV as well. I was like, brilliant, it was bring such you a in. Great, actually, we, we spoke to loads of people who had been here for the very first time this year. And we spoke to one couple who, who quite literally, we were speaking to her for about 15 minutes and they could not stop grinning the whole time. It was great to see. Yeah, Wimbledon is such a special tournament for so many people and for us as well. Danny, from this championship, 
What was your special moment? I mean, there's so many to pick from, but I mean, I, I keep talking about the first week is so much fun because you walk around the outside courts and, and one afternoon I was sort of aimlessly wandering, didn't have a match in particular that I wanted to go and watch, but there were loads and loads of fans crowded round one of the smaller courts and I thought, okay, let's yeah. have a little look, what's going on? And we saw it end up seeing a young man called Carlos Alcaraz um, from Spain, only 18 years old, and he was in a fifth set decider and it was absolutely fantastic. It was only the first round, but my goodness, they were lay laying everything out on the court to really, really go at it. It was fantastic tennis. It might have been the best match I actually saw all week. It was really good fun, um, but that, that's just the magic of it. He's tipped, doesn't he, to be the next to Rafa Nadal yeah, as well. Yeah, there you go. I can say I was there. I saw him <laughs> before anybody. Uh, how about you? Well, I think I'm going to kind of continue your theme, really, of, of youngsters here. Mel just said, didn't she, Emma Raducanu was one of her moments of the tournament. And I'm going to say it's kind of, I guess, just seeing new youngsters come through and possibly put themselves on the tennis stage. We talked about Sebi Corder, how yeah. well he was doing this tournament. He had a couple of five set thrillers here, but my guy of the tournament, I'm gonna say was Denis Shapovalov. Obviously he defeated Andy Murray behind us a couple of weeks ago now and really captured the British fans here. And then of course he was so Terribly defeated by Novak Djokovic so close, on centre court in the semis. And you could see when he walked off the court, you know, the emotion mm, from him, how tears. much he put into that match. And again, really captured the fans here. So I know when he does come back next year, he'll be one to watch. And I'm sure people will be trying to get on a, a court where he is yeah. because, you know, he really was my standout. He's this incredibly tournament. entertaining. And he was very good in the on court interviews yeah, as well. They all have they, been, haven't they? They have been really good fun. Uh, I've very much enjoyed seeing those. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's been a tournament like no other, guys. We really hope you've enjoyed the past fortnight and enjoyed the coffee show as well with Danny and I because we have had so much fun. Yeah. But for now, we're going to leave you with some pretty special moments. Goodbye. Two long years of waiting for this day to come, the first day of the 2021 Championships at Wimbledon. Bye. The ground's laid out before us as always looks a picture very difficult times for everyone but i'm really glad that, that the sport is back and hopefully you will enjoy it in the next couple of weeks oh a thoroughly entertaining point twice a champion andy murray takes to the court no oh, that is brilliant and there is vintage murray again and it looks like that's it If a match ever deserved a standing ovation here at Wimbledon, it's this one. Look at Djokovic's reaction. It's Chabert's finest hour. And didn't he play well? And this is something else. A British teenager on her Wimbledon debut. British tennis has a new star. 18-year-old Emma Raducanu into the fourth round at Wimbledon. He really got me through in the second set, you know, and the first set, the whole match, really. <laughs> it's goodbye, Andy, for this year. Top seed is into week two. Is this going to be her year? What a treat for the spectators here. No, he can celebrate. You dream of moments like this as a kid. Thank you so much for living this moment with me. Raducanu is not able to continue the match. Emma, we wish you well. It's quarterfinals day. Oh, oh, unbelievable tennis. Extraordinary, unique, Novak Djokovic. Superpowered Sabalenka. Magnificent demolition of a great champion. Is this the last time? 
Barty powers into the last four. Matteo Berrettini marches on. Semi-finals at the All England Club. Ash Barty is into the final. Matteo Berrettini will be in the Wimbledon men's singles final. I feel kind of you no know, chills, but I'm doing it, so I have to believe it. <laughs> Sweet Carolina, for the first time ever, a Wimbledon finalist. Ruthless at the end, a clinical champion, Djokovic. <laughs> Love you too. Two first-time finalists here. A destiny fulfilled. I have to thank, genuinely thank every single person in this stadium. You've made my dream so special. Thank you so much. Sun shining here on the final day of the championships. History made. He has caught Federer and Nadal myself how special this is and not take this for granted to enjoy and be aware that this is a huge honor and privilege.